Yo, what's up, YouTube? GCJ here. If you guys are new to the channel and don't know who I am, I'm the 2019 World Cyber Games Clash of World Champion. And today is going to be the first video that I'm doing in a series called the Clash Royale Academy series, where we go over advanced tactics and help you guys um, improve drastically at Clash Royale if you guys are like me and want to win no matter what i've got a request for a video like this in the comment section as well as by my coaching clients if you guys are interested in getting personal coaching by me check out my link in the description it has all my information there and uh yeah so basically we'll be going over this mortar bait deck if you guys have ever watched my channel or watched me on twitch this is literally one of my least favorite decks in clash royale ever since i started playing clash royale i've always hated mortar bait i've never really gotten into it i'm actually pretty bad this is one of my weaknesses this is one of my weaknesses this kind of deck so we're gonna be playing this in about top 1000 ladder and we're gonna see how well i can do i'm expecting me to lose a couple games and that's what i'm wanting actually we're gonna play about three games and we're gonna go over those replays that i lose and hopefully point out some mistakes i'll kind of explain how i like to look for mistakes throughout my replays but hopping in the first game here so with a bait deck usually i want to start with speed albums at the bridge unfortunately already kind of a mistake Heal Spear at the bridge really takes those Spear Gobbies out. Next up, I am going to go with the Skelly Barrel. I think it's important to go with a lot of Skelly Barrels with a deck like this. Yeah. Just right there, like, already making a mistake by my opponent. So I can defend this, and I think I will go with a Murder. So something that's so interesting about this deck, like, it's literally probably, like, one of my least favorite decks because of this, is the fact that it has no Miner. It has no direct damage. Like, your Mortar is so important that you get your Mortar locked on because it's basically your sole win condition. So I'm gonna fireball here, and then I'm gonna go with a knight here. And maybe a musketeer here. My biggest problem is that healer's staying alive forever. Yeah. All right, that's a tower down. <laughs> All right, this will be a good game to go over the replay because I'm not sure what I did wrong. Can't tell if it's just an eagle on player being an eagle on player or if I actually made a mistake there. All right, so almost three times being that first push, you're spamming eagle lum, healer, uh, heal spirit, electro drag at the bridge. Really hard to stop, especially with my musketeer up cycle. Uh, we are going to try my best to get back in this game. Uh, whenever you're playing a Siege deck, it's really important to place your Mortar in this position. If you are looking to get those uh, damage hits. Goblin Gang, try and take out this healer. It's just really struggling, actually. Okay, that's not bad. I'm actually going to go with a Knight here. Tank this Bay Dragon. Can't afford any more King Tower damage. I'm going to go Skelly, Dra uh, sorry, Skelly Barrel in front of my Knight. And he's going with another Eagle on push, so... Go for him. Alright, so I think this is important for playing against Eagle. I definitely gotta get this defensive mortar down. I wanna log those heal spirits if at all possible. Wow, okay. Clutch. Yo, chill, bro. Holy crap. That's a lot of eagles. <gasps> All right, GG. Uh, let's definitely go over this replay. Hopefully, can learn something from it. Um, yeah. Not afraid to show losses, boys. And in fact, in this video, the point is to show losses. So, first thing that you should do, I'm just going to pause right at the start, and we're going to look at our starting hands here. So, just make sure we made the right play with the starting play. Like, I think Spear Goblins at the bridge is actually a really solid start. I want to play them to the right a little bit um, when I play them at the bridge, and actually it will increase the amount of chip damage that you get if, they, if he doesn't defend it, for example. 
The other options for starting place here, I could have mortared the bridge, um, which is pretty risky, so I think I shouldn't have done that. The other thing I could do is must turn back, so... I mean, I think I made the right decision. Next up, I did Skelly Barrel. So right now, I'm just checking out my plays, seeing if there's anything possible, like, in my hand that I currently have, that I could have done that would be more beneficial for me. So this is where I'm considering maybe my first mistake happens. After I see... Baby Dragon Tornado, I'm either playing against Egon or Splash Yard. It's hard to tell if this is a mistake, but I would say that that is probably... It's gotta be, right? The Mortar is what kills me here. And it's I think it's more important, especially since Mortar is like so important for my defense, that I save it for defense until I completely understand what deck that he has. And that was the first mistake, and that's what really cost me this game. Especially versus E Golem. Um, there's like no room for error. Because as you can see here, just get absolutely demolished. So we figured out our first mistake. Basically, how I'm able to do that is look at the instance in which I took the damage. I took the damage from that E Golem push. And what I want to be thinking is what mis like what did what kind of play did I make before, during, or yeah, basically before or during that defense that allowed that to happen. So your sometimes your defense will be the very best that you can do with the cards that you have in hand. Um, that doesn't mean that you didn't make a mistake sometimes. Um, basically, the fact I played that mortar, it was over aggressive, put me down an elixir, and it got rid of my building, uh, so I wasn't able to defend properly. And that's the mistake. It's not even the mistake during the defense, it's a mistake that I did before the defense that made it so I couldn't defend. Anyways, I think I explained that decently well, so let's just get into this defense. This is an assault one. Making sure to log the heal spirit was really helpful. Also, I got kind of lucky. Musketeer actually locks onto this baby dragon. Baby dragon falls. Spear goblins, I think, are really important for defense to clean up those bats. And all in all, that was really solid. So here, once again, I think that's the mistake. The offensive mortar, as you can see, like, by watching this replay, I'm noticing a, a common pattern, right? There's a common pattern of the fact that I play an offensive mortar which disallowed me to defend this push because the defensive mortar actually puts in work when a beatdown push is coming down because it's going to be able to splash like on top of the Egolm and on top of the Night Witch and the healer before it even comes to my side. And from that point, like, even though I cycle to a second mortar, it's impossible for me to defend that point. Granted, I think this matchup is fairly difficult, but uh, we definitely uh, got our mistakes out basically looking at the moments the instances that i take the damage and trying to figure out what i did before and during that defense that allowed him to get the damage or the towers that he did and main things there were that i played uh, too aggressive with my mortars so that's definitely something that i can look for in the future something that i noticed while watching people play this deck is they do get a lot of damage with skeleton barrels but also just their other bait units just being really annoying and the fact that the skeleton barrel actually gets a decent amount of death damage when it pops on top of the tower and it's really hard to stop them from happening a lot of times so uh we're gonna take those mistakes i did from last game and I'm gonna input it into this game. So I'm not gonna play Mortar Bridge right away. Instead, I'm just gonna play Safer, Cycle Log, and hopefully we're gonna be better off going this route. At this point, I definitely gonna go Knight back. I don't want a Musketeer. I think Musketeer is very important for certain defenses. I have a lot of ground units, so I don't have to worry about like cycling Knight, I don't think. I'm gonna go Skeleton Barrel left side. Okay, let's just go with a musketeer right here in the back. So he's got a log actually, and a tornado. Decent tornado pulling that in. So I'm almost certain it's graveyard, which means I don't think I'll be punished by an offensive mortar. So he actually goes with Tesla. Never mind, I'm actually dumb. I thought it was graveyard, but it's definitely going to be uh, Ice Bow. So I just gotta start thinking right now, what are my best counters to Ice Bow? Knight, really important to keep my Knight in hand. Uh, mortars as well, decent. 
Let's go with this. Musketeer is also extremely useful. That's out of cycle. I'm going to go Goblin Gang Musketeer at the bridge right now. And he has Rocket, so he's not going to be able to take this stuff out. And that's going to be really useful information for the future right now. So even during the game, with a new deck that I haven't played much, I'm trying to analyze and realize like what I need to do in order to see my path to victory here. Let's figure out his bridge once again. Let's go this now. Oof, that's unlucky. Maybe I ought to do this. Okay, that's not bad. Nice to tank for my mortar. Let's go with this. Let's go with this. Log here. For a very, very solid, actually. Let's go in the offensive mortar. Let's go with this. See if I get my mortar locked on. That's exactly what I needed. It's like a log. Let's go to the mortar. Defensively. Another skeleton barrel. So we're actually up in damage. I think I just have to keep playing nice defense. Ooh, okay. That's going to be coming hot, I guess. Really concentrating here, really trying to do my best to win here. Let's keep applying pressure with these mortars, they seem to be putting in work. I think, um, I already trying to spot some mistakes here. I think playing the Skelly Bird right at the bridge was a mistake. I want to try and get that uh, death damage that we were talking about. He might go for another rocket cycle fairly soon. Ooh, well played. Let's get this down. All right, solid game. Um, I don't know. Let me know if you guys think I should go over this replay in the comment section. Um, we get the win. At the start of the, uh, of the video, I explained that I want to go over my losses. But another thing, especially when you're starting with a new deck, I think it's really important to also go over your wins because you're not going to be playing the deck perfectly. For example, in this matchup, I feel as though I just have a very solid matchup. And that was the main reason why I was able to win. Like, I'm not sure I even played that 100% correctly. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to go over that replay. Um, and we'll play one more game, but I think I played that one decently um, from the top of my head The mistakes that I kind of realized I was doing there Was the fact like when I played my skeleton barrel directly over the bridge to attack that expo I think that's a mistake because I'm actually want to attack his tower with that skeleton barrel Force him to log or tornado the skeleton barrel to his expo instead And if he doesn't I get that skeleton barrel death damage as well It's another thing to think about Anyways, let's just hop in this game. Going against a skeleton army, a fellow bait user. Not gonna go more to bridge right away. Gonna kind of see what he's up to. Alright, so he's gonna bats here. I'm just gonna go goblin gang. He's gonna snowball. That's perfectly fine. Bats, skeleton army, snowball. 
maybe like lava clone. If so, he's not gonna have much for this. Okay, he's gonna have arrows. So probably um or definitely giant graveyard. Or maybe bowler graveyard. I'm actually gonna leak a little elixir here. I think this is the right move. And then just play nine top. Alright, so Bowler's out of cycle. I think this is a good moment. Must here was playing in the back as well. Okay, he wants with Giant. Maybe not a good moment. We'll see though. He's not going to have a whole lot for Musketeer. And I'm also going to go Goblin Gang. Try to DPS this down ASAP. Okay, that wasn't too bad actually. Just realizing the arrows are out of cycle there, going with the Goblin Gang right away when the Snowball is the only thing in cycle, kind of DPS it down real quick. Obviously, uh, Snowball not taking out the Stab Goblins in the front of the Goblin Gang. I think I'm going to actually switch lanes here. I think he's forced to arrows that. We're going to go for defensive mortar here for sure. Yeah, not arrowsing that, I think it's a mistake. Like, that's a pretty nice chunk of damage. Also gonna go Knight here. Nice, mortar attacking, that was really helpful. You see, okay, we'll have to go to the replay. I'm not really sure what I was should have done in that situation. Still don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to go same lane because he's got like bowler and giant and stuff like that. The double small spell thing he's got going for him is wicked. Arrows out of cycle right now, see if he snowballs this. Oh, I thought I almost messed it up hard. Oof. Should have logged a lot sooner. I think he's just gonna boulder. I'm also lagging. Which makes no sense to me. GG. Alright, that's actually a nice replay to go over though. Um for the for video sake. He's gonna finish it off the arrows there. GG, I think I played like decently, um, but obviously got into that moment where I'm not sure what the best play was, so that's gonna be a really nice video to go over. Let's just hop straight into it. Alright, so looking at the starting hands here. He did have a pretty awkward cycle. He's got a skeleton army, giant, double small spell. Go skeleton army, I have a nice log. I think that's completely fine. Also could be considered a mistake, because if he is going with the skeleton army, he is playing a bait deck. Could have goblin barrel, could be a mistake. Like maybe I should have used the goblin gang in that situation. On the other hand, I was prepared to use my goblin gang as a nice counter to a goblin barrel if he had uh, gone with one. So I think pressuring Skelly Barrel is like, playing Skelly Barrel the Ridge is always a good play, I think. Like, it's it's almost never not a good play, you know? Okay, Spear Goblins of the Ridge. I think that just makes sense to me. Here, I couldn't tell. Like, I didn't want to use my Mortar, and I didn't want to, like, let this Bowler get value on my Musketeer. I think I just wait and get a nice uh, Knight on top. This gets me in an awkward situation. Okay, I do with aggressive mortar. I think that was the right play. Like, I think cycling a log, there's mistakes since I've realized that he is playing a bait oriented deck, at least with the graveyard and the skeleton army. Realizing the arrows were immediately out of cycle when I played the goblin gang, I actually put some some work. And then I go with spear goblins, which are able to counter push because of the fact that they help kill those bats and let my must here kill his must here. And we get some nice chip. Only down, looks like one and a half elixir.
Skeleton Barrel Bridge is what I'm gonna be doing most likely, but he bullers this side. So right now what I'm thinking is I wanna force arrows out of him. That's why I play Skeleton Barrel to the left side. I don't wanna let his bowler just kill that Skeleton Barrel for free. It ends up working out great. I get a lot of damage because he actually refuses to use his arrows. He wants to use it on offense. I kind of realized what he was doing and decided to set up my, or start setting up my defense. So this is what I was wondering. I think this is the main mistake. This knight, needed to be used on that it needed to be used on that musketeer because look that musketeer pop off fortunately i was able to get a nice log and then kill musketeer that way but it just wasn't good enough i don't think and then i take another giant hit so i'm gonna pause here definitely like whenever you guys are watching replay replays always like never be afraid to pause or slow down the replay speed as well so uh, let's just think of that sequence um i realized what he was doing he was saving his arrows in cycle he wanted to use them on offense and he was also saving up elixir by going with a musketeer on that side um and i, I realized he was going to giant grave on the left side in front of that musketeer i do go with the defensive mortar the other things i do have to take care of this counter pushing bowler on the right side if i remember correctly i had mortar knight goblin gang fireball in hand i think going with the mortar at that point is okay i think that was good mortar has a light like a really nice long lifetime so i think playing that early is fine next thing i do is i actually use my knight on the bowler i think that was my main mistake instead i should go goblin gang surround on top of the bowler bowler should only kill half and then i can actually get ship damage with the other half of the goblin gang that might survive and then i would be able to use the knight on top of the musketeer and use the, the musky spear goblins to defend the graveyard like i did and the only thing that would change is he would probably arrows instead um to kill my spear goblins which would be better for me because by the like by snowballing the spear goblins in that situation he was able to hit the mortar as well as slow down my tower which allowed um allowed him to break through for more damage so actually using arrows on spear goblins like if i can make him do that that's actually more beneficial for me and then I'm, at the same time that musketeer wouldn't lock on for that much damage um, and then the other thing that I can do is I can actually time my log better at that point to kill more skeletons of the graveyard. And I would take very, very minimal damage if I had gone with that. And I think that was my main mistake. So as you guys can see here, when I'm looking for my mistakes, I'm looking at the areas in which my opponent is getting the damage. And I'm looking at what I did um, during that defense. But more importantly, before the defense. Like a lot of times... Um, when I'm coaching, people aren't understanding why um, they they lost their tower. And a lot of times, it's not your specific defense. Like, it's not that defense in the moment. My defense, with what I had in my hand, was the best thing that I could have done in that situation, in my opinion. But because of the fact that I used my knight on the bowler, it made it so my cycle wasn't the correct um, cards I needed in order to defend absolutely optimally. So that is a really nice tip. I hope you guys can learn from that. Anyways, let's go into the rest of the replay. There's still more mistakes to be had here, I'd say. Another thing is if you guys want to comment down below and give other suggestions for these mistakes. If you guys are good mortar players, I am not a good mortar player. I can play any deck in the game like really well in my opinion, except for mortar and P.E.K.K.A. Those are like the two decks that I struggle with personally. Okay, I think same thing here, right? R remember what happened in the first replay? We're repeating patterns here. My knight is not cycled for the defense. And, you know, that's not 100% necessary. I actually cycle back to it. So I'm actually pressuring a lot here, and I think that's really good. So here I go must here. I think I should go knight. I think I should go musk here and then knight on the graveyard. Not give him any spell value. And then my log here has to be much, much sooner. I thought that maybe I could get away without logging, but as you can see, by not logging the graveyard, uh, he gets an absurd amount of damage. Whenever you're playing a deck kind of like this, where you don't have any splash units like Baby Dragon or or Electro Wizard or like Electro is kind of splash. Um, even if I didn't lag in this situation, I was already over anyways. But anything like that, 
a lot of times, for example, like 2.6, a lot of the times you're gonna have Musketeer for the defense of the graveyard, it's not gonna be able to do it on its own. You really have to get the logs down. Wanna hit both sides of the tower and the middle part of the tower to wipe away as many skeletons as possible. It's also really important to get the perfect timing down when the skeletons are stacked up enough, but also the skeletons aren't already killing your tower. In that situation, I was a little bit late. My log did not kill the skeletons that were killing my tower fast enough. But um, honestly, I thought this was a really solid video um, for my first Clash Royale Academy video. Um, in the future, I want to really put in some time with like editing and stuff like that. And I'm going to make a very uh, advanced building placement guide because it's been a while since I've seen a good building placement guide. Um, the most recent one I can think of is like Orange Juice made one like t a couple years ago basically. And I want to make one similar to his but a little bit more um, dated because a lot of things have changed since then. And then also Tornado uh, Advanced Placement. Uh, I want to make a video like that for two reasons. I want to help you guys understand the Tornado, but I'm sure I could even discover some interesting Tornado placements with this new Tornado, fairly new Tornado that people haven't really checked out yet. If you guys have any other suggestions for any future Clash Royale Academy videos, definitely comment down below. Please drop a like on this video. We're going to be going for a goal of 200 likes. You guys have been smashing the 100 like goal. Absolutely insane. Love you guys for that. If you guys have watched the video all the way through up until this moment, you guys are also legends. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Same thing with the likes. And uh, that's going to be it. Definitely subscribe and turn on notifications. If you guys are, are having problem turning on those notifications, you just gotta unsubscribe and resubscribe in order to do that. I've gotten a lot of comments about that as well. Anyways, all my socials are in the description as well as my coaching information. That's gonna be it boys. Hope you guys have a great day, night or whatever. Stay juicy and peace out.